Hey, Philadelphia. Welcome to Parks and Rec at Home. This is Daniel Lawson, the Sustainability and Quality Control Manager for Philadelphia and Parks and Recreation. That means that I have the pleasure of traveling all around the city to our different parks and recreation sites and finding ways to make us cleaner and greener. I'm going to give you guys a special tour of the Organic Recycling Center. If you've never been to the Fairmount Park Organic Recycling Center, it's actually been around for a couple of decades, and these days we offer more services than ever. Now, we're specifically closed right now to stem the spread and to keep everybody at home and safe. Uh, but I'd like to show you around to show you how this place works, and then hopefully we'll see you guys sometime in the future. Now, most of our visitors and guests to this place are traditionally adults, but I definitely encourage you to have your kids watch along with you as it's never too early to learn about more ways to be sustainable and to go green. Let's start off with an actual map of where you are in the yard. Right now, we're standing in the middle of that blue rectangle up in the top left, and that's the weigh-in station. It's right next to the scale house where everybody who comes in checks in to see how much material they're bringing in, how much they might be dropping off, and how much they might be leaving with. That weight also helps us determine how much they have to pay if they're an outside contractor or if, even if they're a resident dropping off materials. So when you come in, you'll see this scale identified by the stop sign. And we ask that every visitor hops up onto this and waits for the green light from the scale house to move in. We ask that you also drop by here on your way out. According to the logs from the scale house, this site recycled over 5,000 tons of organic material in 2019 alone. That's all organic stuff that would have gone into a landfill if we hadn't turned it into local materials that are put right back out into the community. Over here is the pickup area where you're able to get compost, single ground wood chips, or mulch. And we'll end our tour over there. First, I'm gonna walk you all around the perimeter so that you can see what types of materials we take in and how we actually process them. As I'm walking over to our first station, I'll explain to you all that residents are actually given a free 30 gallons of whatever material they need for each visit. We ask that you bring your own container. So this could be six five gallon buckets. It could be a couple of trash bags that you fill up a third of the way to make sure that the bag doesn't bust. Uh, but as long as you bring a Philadelphia or a Pennsylvania ID, um, that material is up for grabs for you. If you're trying to take more than that, uh, that's where we use your weights from the weigh station to charge how much is due. Now, this is one of the areas where woody debris is dropped off. Obviously here you can see some larger logs. These come from contractors. They also come from our district tree crews and arborists working all over the city. Over here you'll see some finer wood debris. This is mostly brush from landscaping. It could even be from home projects or projects happening all over the park. We do ask when you visit that you make sure that these materials are separated in your truck and that you put the bigger stuff in one pile, the smaller stuff in another pile. And this last drop-off location I'm showing you all here in the back, this is our leaf waste and grass clippings. So some of this material comes from residents or contractors who are doing small landscaping jobs, but actually over 2,000 tons of this in 2019 came from the leaf collection program that the streets department carries out. So some of you all might know that there are several dozen leaf collection sites throughout the city. So thanks for residents who participate in that. And thanks to the streets department for bringing that stuff over here to our organic recycling center so that we can actually turn it into compost. So these are our windrows. This is where the compost is actually made. Now, these rows look really calm on the top, but inside each row, there's microbial activity going on. It's bringing the temperatures up to around 150 degrees in some spots. This is how the material actually breaks down and cooks, as we say. 
It's a mixture of what we call browns in the compost world, which is mostly dry organic material like those dried leaves we were looking at or any kind of paper products. And we mix it with greens, which can be something like food uh, or in our case, uh, herbivore manure that we get from local horse stables. Uh, another fun fact is that every year we take a few dozen tons of food waste and paper waste from zero waste events all over the city and add it in. So anyone who's run our uh, Broad Street Run or the Philadelphia Marathon in the fall um, and has participated in our zero waste programs by throwing their cups into the compost bin, it actually all feeds into these feedstocks and it ends up becoming finished compost. Now those rows are getting turned over by a machine I'll show you in a little bit, every seven to ten days. Uh, but when they've been turned over after a couple months, several times, we put them through this screener which helps us get out any kind of trash or junk or larger particles. You can already tell looking at this pile that it's a little more finished than the one before it. And over here is our curing pile. After things have been screened, we take the load over here to cure, and this is actually the pile that we pull from uh, for, the, for the loads up at the entrance where we started that customers are allowed to pick up. This stuff is great. Let me find a spot to dig in here. Look at that material. Can you believe that came from those leaves back there? And even from cups and napkins and food from some of the races. We have this stuff tested four times a year. It's top quality, top class. Um, we've gotten pretty good results on it, heard good things from folks who pick it up, and our own Farm Philly program uses it in their own gardens. Uh, some uses that I would advise for compost, you can use it to start any kind of garden or even amend your garden soil every year and that can be a butterfly garden, a pollinator garden, or just a flower garden for aesthetics. It can also be a food producing garden. There's a huge urban ag community here in Philadelphia that depends on this stuff, whether it's coming from us or another compost producer, to grow their food every year. And the last use I'd say for the compost is actually for top dressing um, your, your turf and lawn. Uh, there's a, you can look up on the internet different ways to do that, but essentially you're laying a thin layer of compost on top of any kind of lawn or turf area and raking it in so that you can really build up some good soil. Now we're over in an area where we have two other finished products. Now remember all that brush and those large logs that we saw earlier? When that stuff gets chipped up by the beast over here this horizontal grinder, it turns into this wood chip product. Now you can see this stuff is really chunky, right? Let's see if I can give you some scale. This is what a bigger piece would look like. Here's what some smaller wood chips look like. Uh, some good uses for this, you'll notice because it's so blocky, could be for uh, some weed blocker. So you can put this in areas where you're trying to suppress the weeds. Uh, it can also, as you can see, I'm actually walking up this pile right now it can also be used to create a footpath or an area that you want people to congregate um, this could be on your own property uh, it could be around picnic areas maybe you want to have a path that goes through your backyard or maybe this can be used on a trail and for different use we take a portion of this periodically and grind it a second time to make our mulch product. Now, the mulch over here is a lot finer in its grain, and this also has several uses. You guys might use yourselves or see other people using mulch like this around gardening. So it can go on top of gardens each season, it can go around trees or shrubs, and it has a couple benefits. One, it does a little bit of what the wood chips do in actually keeping weeds down. Uh, two, it can actually retain moisture, which is great 
for um, slow feeding water to your vegetation over time. Uh, it's also great for creating boundaries where if you have a contractor who's doing mowing or weed whacking or other kind of landscaping, it, it gives a nice solid uh, border so they don't actually mow into your garden or clip a tree from coming too close. And then after that stuff breaks down, it's really nutrient rich and it's actually gonna feed nutrients into whatever plant it was dressing just in time for you to add a new layer. All right guys, and that's our scarab. That's the machine that, as I promised to show you, that does all of the uh, turning of our compost rows. You see all those sharp grinders in the bottom there, those gears. Uh, when they drive over these compost rows, that's how everything gets turned and evenly composted. All right, so I'm taking you back up to the front, the public collections area, just as I promised when we started out. Uh, on the way up there, you'll notice that in addition to all of our um, equipment and vehicles that we use for the organic recycling activities, we've got a whole bunch of other vehicles here. So this yard isn't just the organic recycling center, it also houses several maintenance crews that do all of the tree work for uh, the southern half of the city and all the grounds crews that take care of cleaning up trash or dumping or litter or doing all the maintenance on the vegetation and the turf uh, and all of the trails that you guys uh, might use out there in East and West Fairmount Park or the public parks and squares that are in Center City. And those guys and ladies are out there all week, including uh, this week and uh, all the prior weeks doing this maintenance to make sure that we have clean green public spaces that are safe clean and ready to use so if you see any of those men and women out there working throughout your week uh, please give them a thank you and let them know that you appreciate what they're doing to create these spaces for you uh, and as we approach the collections area now that you've seen a little bit of under the hood you know that that's what goes into making this finished compost product on the right the single ground wood chips in the middle and that nice darker mulch on the left uh, for your various uses. And we encourage you guys to come and get some of this. It's a service that we are really proud to provide for the community. Thanks a lot for taking a tour around the yard with me. I had a good time showing it to you. And again, we're sorry that we're closed right now, but when things open back up, we're gonna be really excited to see you all again. So please come and give us a visit. Using materials that are recycled like this is great because it's a way to support and care for our earth by using less materials, reusing the things that we're already generating within the community, and diverting things away from the landfill. Uh, in the meantime, uh, if, you, if you enjoyed this content, we ask that you give it a like, leave a comment, or even better, share it with some of your friends. If you're interested in learning more about the Recycling Center in particular, checking out our address and even seeing a copy of our price sheet online, you can always check out what else we're doing by going to our website, www.phila.gov slash Parks and Recreation. Thanks for tuning in to Parks and Rec at Home. Uh, and from the blue and gold, we're asking you all to go green. And most importantly right now, stay home and stay safe.